Hey friends, I'm John and this is my red tail boa Scarlet. I have quite a few years experience breeding ball pythons and creating social media. Take a quick second to smash those like and subscribe buttons because it helps grow my channel. And let's see what we have going on today. Needless to say, it has been a rough start to this year so far. Um, luckily, it looks like we have some good news today. Um, <clears throat> so this is actually gonna be my fifth clutch that we are <clears throat> pulling today. And this girl looks like she had a very nice clutch for her first go around, considering that she took uh, over a year to actually lay these eggs. Um, so let me get her off of them really fast and then check her. They're huge eggs, <clears throat> which is always a good thing. Um, but it kind of stinks that I was hoping she had more eggs in her because, I mean, she was humongous. Um, but she has been ready to breed since like 2022. I started pairing her up and it took her this long. Today is March 7th for her to actually lay a clutch of eggs. So, uh, you know, breeding snakes doesn't always happen right away. I witnessed a bunch of locks between them. I see at least three from this past year. Um, but she is a, a bamboo black pastel head ultra male. And she was bred to my OD Leopard Firefly uh, Ultra Male Het Pied Male, who also ends up being Yellow Belly and potentially Enchi. So there's the potential to have some like six, seven, or eight gene snakes in here that are Ultra Male plus Het Pied. So uh, there's a bunch of stuff going on here. Now I was hoping this clutch was bigger, um, but there's only six eggs, but these are probably some of the biggest eggs <laughs> that I've ever had. If you can see those here and I'll weigh them here um, after I get mom cleaned up and put away but they look humongous which is good for my veins because I actually had some really rotten luck this year with uh, clutches so far so let me get her washed off and weighed and put away and then we'll talk a little more about this clutch all right so mom weighed 1700 grams after laying this clutch and there's six eggs here <clears throat> And they weigh 775 grams, which on average means that these eggs are over 100 grams a piece, which is absolutely enormous, especially because two of these are kind of on the normal side. The other four of these eggs are huge, uh, a lot bigger than what you're normally used to for eggs, which is kind of neat. Um, but uh, um, back to the story about breeding her. So I, she, she was ready to breed in 2022. Um, <clears throat> She was, you know, obviously a little smaller back then. She had been paired to the same male, uh, so she's only ever been paired to one male. Um, I, it's hard to say why she never grew follicles um, before now. Um, and even right now, I don't even think she had a lot of locks recently, and she just decided to go. Um, you know, it took me over a year to get eggs out of this girl, and, you know, she's only a double head, but or she's only a single het, but because of how powerful the male is, we're gonna make some potentially awesome, awesome snakes. Because he's um, a visual ultra male, half of the baby should be ultra male. So roughly, you know, three of these eggs should have visual ultra males in them. Now, um, the cool part about this is there are so many genes in play. The dad is five, potentially six genes, um, codoms, and the mom's two. So there's seven or eight codoms in this clutch. So 50% of the time, those genes should get passed along to the, to the babies. So what that means um, is that all these babies should have at least four genes in them um, on average. So the potential to make some serious firepower for my Ultrapide project is, is there. Even if I'm happy with ultra mills, even if they end up not being uh, head pieds, I don't even care. This clutch is more about just making insane snakes that nobody's seen before. Um, because the dad doesn't have bamboo, uh, which is uh, an awesome gene in ultra mill, and she does. Plus, she also brings black pastel, which brings some of more of that like, purple tone into the ultra mill. There's so much that can be in this clutch that people have never seen before, that I've never seen before, um, that I'm really, really excited about. So I think um, 
there, there's just, there's, I don't even, I don't even know what to say. I, I've been excited about this clutch dropping for a long time. Uh, I'm really, you know, it kind of stinks that it took this long to get here, but so far, the eggs will look good. Man, these are the biggest eggs I've ever seen. I'll actually go weigh one after I'm candling these here, just to see what one of the big ones weighs, because I've never in my life seen eggs this big. Um, actually, let me go do it right now, I'll be right back. All right, this egg right here is 145 grams. Look at it in the size of my hand. It's enormous. The single biggest egg I've ever seen, there's another egg in here roughly the same size. Um, and there's this third and fourth one are kind of close in size too. Um, so hopefully there's something cool in there, or I'm just gonna get extremely large hatchlings. Um, maybe there's twins in there. Maybe there's some twin gene going on here. I don't know. I'm really excited to see what happens here. And I'm hoping I get as many ultra males as possible. Um, you know, my odds so far in the past couple clutches have been kind of bad. I lost my black exanthic clutch a couple weeks ago. They were all slugs. They came out of slugs, which was terrible because that was my last chance at black exanthics for quite a while. Um, so I'm really, this has been my this is gonna be my first ultra visual ultra melt clutch um, since last summer. I, had, I hit two of them on a on a visual to head pairing. Everything else I produced in the ultra melt project last season, uh, they were all uh, ultra melt het pied male bred to pied female. So I have a bunch of pied head ultra melt holdbacks that have a bunch of genetics in them. Um, but I can show you the kind of things that this dad has produced. These are actually the two visual ultra males that he produced last season. They both happen to be females and they both happen to prove positive for het pied as well. Um, so this is just, he was bred to a plain, no gene, het ultra male female. And these are the two snakes that I got out of it. These are just with the genes from dad with nothing else from the female. So I can't imagine if I hit bamboo or black pastel in one of these combos, or maybe added another gene or two, what I'm gonna get out of it. Cause these are two of the best looking snakes I've seen. They're both six, 700 grams at this point. As you can see, they're big and still beautiful and holding their colors very well. So this project is just insane to me. And on top of that, we don't even have those genes in Ultra Pied yet. So, and those are both Het Pied. And uh, all the other stuff that I kept is Pied Head Ultra Mel, and they all have multiple genes in them as well. So this project, like the, the things we can do with it are crazy. There are so many just plain Ultra Mel combos that nobody's produced yet um, that just are gonna be absolutely crazy and striking. But the things that we can do with the Ultra Pied project moving forward um, are pretty much unimaginable because it's there's not as much going into the project and I have a feeling that once I start producing uh, some crazy ultra pieds this coming season in, in really uh, 2025 it's hopefully gonna change the way people look at the ultra pie project so I'm gonna finish candling these eggs in some darkness uh, put them in the incubator and they should hatch around May 2nd maybe I'll get lucky I had a clutch hatch last year on May 4th so obviously Star Wars fans may the 4th be with you maybe these guys will come out on May 4th as well so we get some more um, Star Wars related snakes so thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next time